some research that you were caught a little bit off guard by the success of 805. Yeah. Can you talk about why that happened? <laughs> and how, you, how you got on board to you know ride that wave? Well, we, you know, um, first of all, I mean, for those of you who don't know, I mean, the story of 805 is sort of interesting. It's um, we made that beer for the brewers and for some of our friends. It was always a crowd pleaser. Um, it was a little bit like a Riesling or Rosé. Um, and uh, but you know we were a you know we were a two-fisted strong craft brewer changing the world. We were going to make West Coast IPAs and barrel-aged beers, and you know we're not going to make a Blondale because you know we weren't going to make one. But we made one for the brewers, and we made one for some of our local friends, and it ended up getting sort of pulled away from the brewery. It ended up in the sort of 75, 100 local accounts as a private label beer. So you walk into um, you walk into Firestone Grill down in the, uh, uh, you know, down in Slow, and they'd have Firestone Blondale. Uh, or, or, no, they wouldn't call it Firestone, they'd call it, they, they call it the Grill Blondale or something like that. It was the wrong, that's the wrong uh, example to give you. Um, anyway, so it was a, we always knew it was a huge crowd pleaser. We never really talked about it. Um, uh, and then one day, one of our sales guys, um, actually our oldest sales guy, uh, Mike DeSanto, calls me. He goes, yeah, he says, you know, really struggling with the local brewers. They, you know, they're really getting in the face of the customers and saying that you know, we're, we're, we're no longer interested in the local market and uh, you know, we're interested in bigger things. And so we said, okay, we just need to remind people we're local. Um, luckily, we trademarked 805 a year or so before because Anheuser-Busch had gone through the west coast of the US trademarking all of the really beneficial um, area codes. They thought it was a good idea. Uh, we thought it was a great idea that they didn't trademark it. <laughs> so we snagged it. Um, and two things came together. So we said, I tell you what, just let's take that trademark that we need to do something with, otherwise we're going to lose it. Put it on that video, remind people we're from the 805. Um, and th literally, that was it. Mike and his crew went out, swapped out, eight, swapped out 100 handles, and all of a sudden, the strangest thing happened. Those 100 handles that were delivering X amount of beer delivered X times five. And it was like, well, that's weird. People obviously are pretty proud about being part of the end of the And then I, it was sort of weird. I, I don't know where out of my head was at. All of a sudden, I was sort of wandering around the brewery, and half the guys have got 805 tattooed on their rear. You know, and it's, like, it's like, oh, I get it. And, um, and then we had a, you know, a local designer um, uh, who was working for us, and he, he gave it a little bit of a gritty feel. We separated it from the brand. Um, and then it just sort of took off. Um, and then about a year later, this, this guy wanders into the brewery. Uh, where we sort of, sort of invited him, but he was an ex-pro ex surfer who worked for Volcom. And he was looking for a job. He went to Templeton High, and we said, hey, can you, can you cultivate this 805 story? And it's like, yeah, of course, I, you know, I lived it all my life. And so he began to cultivate the 805 story, which connected with people all over the world. I mean, I'm not joking, it was extraordinary. When you say cultivate the story, what does that mean? The lifestyle, not the beer. Yeah. I mean, whenever, you, whenever we talk about 805, we talk about the place that we all live. And we all live here because we love it. Um, and we began to tell that story, and an emotional connection developed with the, with the beer. And as you all know, if you, if you can emotionally connect anything with a consumer, it, it takes on exponential levels. And that's what happened with the 805. And it, all of a sudden, we noticed, I mean, it was just available in the 805, got bootlegged out of here into the Central Coast. It's on fire in the Central Coast, frankly, because everybody in the Central Coast comes to the 805 when the sun shines, or when it shines, shines a lot. Um, and, and then it got, went south and north, and now it's, it's on fire in Nevada and Arizona. Um, I mean, it just, it just became a really interesting, well-developed brand. But it was, it really was, it, I mean, 8 to 5 wasn't contrived. We were sort of dragged into it, and we just sort of kept turning the cards over and saying, oh, that's what you need, okay, and that's what you need. And um, it led, led us to where we are, are today.